color. Uh, those blades are spinning uh, fast and they tend to be sharp and you would not want to lose communication with your ROV. Looks like we've got a light underwater now. This might be them. I believe it is. The aquaholics are in the water. This is a shot from uh, our underwater rover. They're moving into position. Looks like they're trying to go over and identify the autonomous ROV that Darwin had sent out and it had run out of power. Looks like they're coming up onto it right now. One of the uh, mission challenges is to come up and see the nameplate on that ROV and uh, show that to the judges. There's three judges poolside. Uh, there's one that is watching the action in the pool, to actually two watching action in the pool. One watching the monitors that the uh, students are, uh, are watching and each time the student feels they've completed a task, they point that out to the judge and they uh, then determine whether or not they have completed that mission task. I think especially for the elementary school teams, um, it's important to know that they can get a lot of points just for identifying things. So they may not have the capability to uh, twist the, the winch or right. um, you know, have the data loggers or anything, but they can actually go around and identify the aliens, the colors of the aliens, and still get points for those. So. Most definitely. <laughs> so you don't have to perform all the tasks. Uh, there are, are tasks uh, that are a little more complicated. There are tasks that are uh, relatively easy to do. And uh, so we have the different, different levels of competition, the four different levels. And we want to give each one of those levels uh, some challenges and uh, so they can uh, have uh, fun as well as a challenging competition uh, that they compete in. In other ways they can get points as well because there's a technical uh, report that's required and as you were mentioning Don, the website, uh, the video and doing an oral presentation as well. So they have a lot of points that they can get for that and remain competitive, but we like to have a lot more of the elementary school teams because STEM education is really important and I think these kinds of activities, especially robotics, um, are really propelling the students forward to be interested in their classrooms, uh, in their math and science uh, classes. So it's important that they have extracurricular things that they can do to I, encourage and that. And I think the hands-on that they're able to to do in these type of activities uh, really stimulates their young minds and uh, rather than just uh, the book learning which is very important but they get to uh, apply some of those things in their uh, in their education. Mm -hmm. I think it goes hand in hand because you can't have one without the other and we've been trying to do one without the other you know for a long time but now we're realizing that it's important to have both, and you need your classroom. Hey, Jasmine, are you a champ? This is Don. Are you looking at the robotic competition? Okay. It's hard to keep them a secret from year to year. It yeah. is. It is most <laughs> definitely. So here we are back at the uh, the winch, the uh, in the foreground who are getting the team going and serving as president or leader, and they're very good project managers, but we need to make sure that the, the women also have the skills and the technical skills uh, that the guys are seeming to get somehow, um, but they need to use tools, and they need to understand programming, and they need to understand um, uh, building these things and how they function. I think it's really important. So LEGIT actually uh, is an acronym, I, I'm trying to remember what the L and the E stand for, but it's Girls in Technology. Carmen, do you know? Leading and empowering girls. girls in Technology. So leading and empowering girls in technology. One of their sponsors, it looks like Maria has a sponsor on the pool deck that wants to talk about ATW. Um, this is an all-women's organization that's actually helping them to compete as well.
Okay, here we are with one of the legit sponsors, ATW, and with Which Diana. For the Alliance of Technology and Women, Diana. <laughs> so what, what, what's the purpose of helping these girls? We, as a program, we're really interested in programs that help women get involved in engineering in a way where they'll stay involved in engineering throughout their career. So I, I've noticed you, you're, you're matching with the team, incidentally. So what do you think about the, the team this year? I know you've been talking with them, so what's your opinion? Oh, they are fabulous. It has been so much fun to come down here today and see <laughs> them working together and solving the problems. I know that the skills that they're learning here will make them better employees in the workplace yeah. and help them get through college. Do you have any advice for all any girls out there? For all kinds of different programs, I would advise that you do the thing that you really want to do, but you're a little afraid to do, and you'll learn from that. Whether it works the first time or not, you'll learn by doing the thing you want to do, but seems a little bit out of reach. Thank you, Diane, and hopefully our girls will do well in this competition. Actually, this team, as uh, Maria mentioned, this is the first time that they qualified. They've been competing for three years, I believe, um, and their robot has evolved, and now um, they're actually um, getting a little bit more f sophisticated, but this is the first time that they've qualified, so it's really a great thing to see that uh, they progressed over the years and passed down some information. It's a great job, and it looks like they're uh, out poolside getting ready to uh, enter the water there. And another thing, Don, you might know or have noticed, um, you know, one of the reasons why we want to encourage all female teams is because women are underrepresented out in industry. We don't have a lot of women who are engineers or go into engineering in the first place. In fact, it's one of the, the career fields that um, is very unbalanced. And so we're trying to change that nationally. There's a lot of programs that are focusing on women and trying to get them into technical career fields. And um, hopefully if there's more of them um, that are entering those, those fields, mm -hmm. then they won't feel like they're by themselves or alone. Okay. So. Well, we've got, actually we have a little video that was um, shot just recently that gives a little uh, information about the Legit team. Let's go ahead and run that video if we can. Our team name is LEGIT, stands for Leading and Empowering Girls into Technology. We are from Carl Hayden High School and we are an all-girls team. Our robot design is made out of fiberglass. It's 25 by 25 by 25 inches and it's cute. Our vertical motors are face diagonally away from each other so it gives us an easier movement to turn. And we have our pigtail which is our arm which spins counterclockwise and clockwise to um, pick up rings. Our mission plan is for the first 15 minutes of the 30 minutes for the mission is to spot as many things as we can spot throughout the whole thing, like to spot the aliens and like all of the other props. And then for the second 15 minutes is to try to do and accomplish as many things as possible. We are we are categorizing by the things we can do um, according to our pixel and stuff like that. Okay, that 